Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, we're going to learn how to get slotted for NCSAs. So today, December 1st, is the first day that they open up for NCSAs and you have until January 15th to apply for the summer NCSAs. The winter NCSAs, which are NCLS and CLA, both applications are open from October 15th to November 15th and so that deadline's already closed unless you're watching this video in the future. Um, if you want to know what the NCSAs are, you can click on the little link up there and it's ncsas.com and it has a list of all of them. You can sort them by location, cost, um, age, requirements, etc. and see exactly what you're eligible for and what you can apply for. So it's based on a scoring system which is all based on points. There's four different categories. You have your age, your achievement, which means your grade if you're in a, you have your Wright Brothers, you have your spots. Your longevity in the program and your prior NCSAs. So if we're going to go ahead, you can see the chart little right over here. Um, but for me, I'm 18 years old, so I get 10 points. I'm a spots cadet, so I get 20 points. I've been a cap longer than five, than five years, so I get 15 points. And then my prior activities, I've been to three or more NCSAs, so I get zero points for you, So overall, you can see the 10 plus the 20, so you have 30, I have 45 points total. And so I go in there and I would be like, do, 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 do. Can it curl on my fin line, cap ID, probably some other random requirements, and it's going to say 45 points. Well, if I'm going against Kit Jones, who's a 14 year old uh, Mitchell cadet, he's going to have three points for his age. His, he's a Mitchell cadet, so he's, he's got 12, so there he is at 15 points. He's been in cap for three years, and that gets him to 24 points, and he's done no other. Um, activities so that, that gets him in, that gets him to 39 points. So I would get the activity over Cadet Jones because I have 45 and he has 39. So these are just the basic qualifications for uh, a flight academy or um, civil engineering or e-tech robotics or model rocketry or model flight club whatever they are. All those in CSAs. The ones that are, have a supplemental application, so IA, CLA, NCLS, maybe PGOC, um, those kind of activities are actually all slotted manually. So while it actually goes in and you, you submit your application, whether that's a letter of recommendation, an essay, a questionnaire, but you submit that and there's actually a committee that sits down and they give points to all of your answers and that is how you're then slotted. But there's other factors. You can be green-lighted and your priority that you give. So if I list PGOC as my number one, a flight academy is number two, well, and all the way at number eight, I have civil engineering academy. Well, even though I have those certain points, I'm not going to get it because it's my ninth priority. They're going to try and get that to the first and second priority people. So each wing gets to green light. 10% of their applicants. So if your wing has 20 people who apply for NCSAs, your wing gets to green light 10% of those, so two cadets. So if a wing has 11 applicants, they'll get 1.1% and they get to recommend one cadet. And there's no guarantee that the green lighted cadet will receive their first, first choice priority. Um, it's very likely that they'll get to go to their top schools. So. Each wing kind of has a different system for this. Some wings have a board that you sit through, some have a form, some just go through, oh, and like select cadets on random. Um, so figure out how your wing greenlights cadets for these NCSAs and it will improve your spot. So if you're wanting to go to National Blu-ray, which is one of the most, it, it, it's the most applied for activity, there's a limited amount of spots. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you get your application in there early because your squadron needs to approve it, your wing needs to approve it. And then you want to make sure that you can get your score as high as possible. So if you can promote from a chief to a Mitchell cadet before that slotting process happens, you're going to be better off. Um, than the, there's no other, that there, that's the only one you can really control um, because your age and your longevity in the program and your NCSAs are already predetermined. So make sure you get that in there. For Blue Beret, if you don't get selected, you get selected as an alternate which means you get put on a separate list. And then the actual NCSA, so National Blue Beret or Civil Engineering Academy, they're the ones who actually control who they're, as, alter, as primaries drop out, they control 
the ultimates they pull in. So for National Blue Beret, there's a little poll sent out and if you have all your qualifications done, they're gonna take your name and move it up their wait list because you have all your qualifications done and then you're more likely to get into the program. Um, if you don't get into it, you can go ahead and, if you're on the alternate list and um, you mainly just want to prepare as if you were kind of already going. Not necessarily for all of them, but for like PGOC, if you didn't get a primary, don't stop working out because there's a decent chance that as the weeks go on, even up to a week before the activity, you could still get slotted for that activity. Um, I know that was for me for IACE, I didn't get originally slotted and then I got call, a phone call and they were like, hey, would you like to be? And I was like, hell yes. Um, I've known people for PGOC, Blue Beret, who get slotted very last minute because people drop out. So just because you didn't automatically get in the first place doesn't mean you won't. Um, you can get red lighted, it's not really something to worry about, but it basically just means, hey, your wing will not let you go to an NCSA. It only really happens if you do something really bad. Um, and there is an encampment prerequisite that most of you should already know about. If you don't, um, you need encampment credit to go. Um, there are some, some NCSAs, like if you go to summer encampment in Indiana, you can go to NISA right afterwards. Um, you cannot, like, you can't apply for NCSAs without having that encampment credit. So if you go to a winter encampment and then you want to apply for NCSAs, that works because that credit will go in before January 15th. But if you want to go to a summer encampment and then go to a summer NCSA, the only really ones you can go to are NISA or LISA because those both are done through um, alternate websites. They're not done through the primary slotting system. They're done, at pretty much everyone who applies gets in. Um, if you want to have, if you have questions on the supplementals for COS, NCLS, or IAs, I'm probably going to do a video on IA supplemental application um, in the coming few days or weeks, so leave your comments below on those. If you have any more questions on how exactly to apply, I have a video somewhere linked up there about how exactly how to apply via e-services. Um, hopefully this explains the slotting process and how you can get in and green lighting and all those things. Your best chance is give it a top priority, see if you're promoted as fast as you can, and don't give up hope that you're going to get into the activity. Good luck on all your applications and what you're applying for. Leave in the comments below what you are hoping to attend, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.